Good day and welcome to the Ultimate Fighter Call. Today's call is being recorded. At this time, I'd like to turn the call over to Miss Isabel Hodge. Please go ahead. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us on today's Ultimate Fighter Media Conference call. Uh, yesterday, the UFC officially announced that UFC light heavyweight champion John Bones Jones and challenger Chael Sonnen had been named coaches for season, season 17 of the Ultimate Fighter set to air in January on FX. Today on the call, we're joined by UFC President Dana White, along with both John and Chael. So I'll turn it over to Dana for opening remarks. And we also have Chuck Sappler from FX uh, on here. That's it. Who's got the first question? If you would like to ask a question, please press star 1. If you're joining us today, use a speakerphone. Please make sure your mute function is turned off to allow your signal to reach our equipment. And if you did press star 1 before, please press star 1 once again. Again, that will be star 1 for questions, please. We'll pause for just a moment. And our first question will come from Kevin Richardson with the Baltimore Sun. Hi, my first question is for John. John, um, I know you had mentioned that you didn't want to fight Shell before because you didn't think he was worthy of actually fighting for the championship. He hadn't fought anyone in 205 in many years. Uh, what changed your mind? Was it the money that they offered? Uh, no, it wasn't uh, anything... You know, my decision had nothing to do with finances. It really just had to do with, uh, you know, just getting over this chapter in my career. You know, it's like I'm trying to move forward and do a lot of amazing things. And, uh, you know, the UFC 151 cancellation, uh, you know, it's like it was a tough moment in my career. And I think beating Shell Sana would help me, you know, beating Shell Sana. And, and then after that, beating Dan Henderson uh, would help me uh, just have closure to that whole situation. So I think this is, you know, this is really what this is about for me. It's just uh, putting closure to uh, the chill, sun, and uh, invasion of my career. And uh, so, and the whole 151 situation. Now, have you had a chance to, uh, I know you'll be taping pretty soon. Have you had a chance to uh, choose your uh, coaches? Uh, yeah, I've been uh, doing some calls around trying to see uh, who'll be willing to do it, and, and I've chosen a few. Uh, thank you, and good luck, John. Uh, thanks, buddy. Once again, if you would like to ask a question, please press star 1. Next question will come from Lance Buckmeyer with the Los Angeles Times. Hey, John. Um, I just wanted you, so it sounds like what you're saying is, is that your past, uh, um, you know, decision to decline fighting Chael, it, it was not really about whether or not you can win this fight. And, and, and why do you believe that you can? A significant layoff here. Yeah, they said that um, that I probably shouldn't be training uh, for the next several months. Um, so uh, you know, filming the show um, might be a little more difficult, but I'll definitely give it my best. And I, like I said, I brought in some pretty great coaches, and I'll definitely be getting hands on with the fighters, I'm sure. Um, but you know, they saw they found small tears in my elbow, and uh, 
right now. I'm just doing some rehab, and I'm excited to be able to do the rehab uh, in Las Vegas with uh, some of the UFC recommended um, therapists, you know, to get me back uh, healthy. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And our next question comes from Mac Engel with the Fort Worth Star Telegram. Uh, our first question is for Dana. Uh, Dana, any chance that you guys are any closer to staging uh, a big fight at uh, Cowboy Stadium in uh, Arlington sometime next year? I know you've mentioned that the Cowboys have mentioned that. I want to just get an update on that first. Yeah, it just depends on how everything lines up, you know, um, <clears throat> what big fights we can make, what injuries will or won't happen. Uh, we'll see We'll see how everything, how everything plays out. But, yeah, we definitely are planning on doing a big fight there. Do you have any timeline, Dana, when you would like to do that by? No. As soon as as soon as we can make, you know, that big fight where we feel like we could sell close to 100,000 or 100,000 tickets. Oh, okay. Uh, next question, uh, Dana, thank you. Uh, the next question is, yep. for, um, is for John. Dana, as a coach, and, and now that you're around some of these younger guys coming up, when you look back at your career and what you've done, what's the what are the two what are the biggest pieces of advice that you can give to young fighters breaking into this sport who want to who want to make it their career? Like, what are the things that you've done? You said, man, I wish I had done differently. I wish somebody had told me X, Y, or Z. Uh, the, the, I guess the big biggest uh, biggest things that's contributed to my success, and that I'll definitely try to get across to the guys uh, that I'm coaching, is to be uh, extremely passionate first and foremost. You know. And, uh, you know, hopefully my passion about martial arts will inspire my fighters. Uh, but, you know, first, you know, foremost, it's just the passion um, that I'm going to try to be a living example of and, and show them the um, importance of. And then uh, then the other thing I would have to say is to have the work ethic to back up that passion. You know, everyone has passion. You know, uh, Chell has passion. You know, obviously you see the way he talks and what, he, what he's tried to do and what he's done to get to where he's at now. Uh, but passion is worth nothing if you don't have the work ethic to really back that uh, that passion up. So um, passion and work ethic, that's what I'm about, and that's what I'm going to be showing my fighters on the show. Next question comes from Dave Meltzer with MMAFighting.com. Yeah, um, a couple things. Dana, I mean, can you kind of explain um, why Chael got the pick? Um, you know, obviously it's going to be something criticized since he's coming off of a loss, hasn't fought in the weight class. And there are a, a number of contenders, you know, that one would think would be higher rated than than Chael as far as getting it. And um, so, so why, why Chael? Why is Chael getting the pick for the next title shot? Yep. So basically, we got the word that after John went out and got his elbow checked, that he was out and he couldn't fight till April. Um, so it made sense for him to do the Ultimate Fighter. Uh, why? Why block up? We we can still fight. Uh, Machida can fight, Dan Henderson can fight, all these, uh, Gustafsson and, and, uh, 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 Shogun are going to fight in December, and so everything will keep right on moving. When I talk to, you know, and, and I'll let, I'll let Jones speak for himself, obviously Chael wants this fight, has been asking for this fight, the fans wanted this fight, yeah, there's some people now saying, oh, this is ridiculous, whatever. John, this is this. I'll let John speak for himself. John said, "Listen, I'm going to be there. I can't fight till April. I want to. I'd like to go in there and whoop Chael's ass, and then I'll defend the belt against whoever you want me to defend the belt against." So it made sense. These guys will both coach the Ultimate Fighter. They'll fight, and uh, when the season's over, and then whoever's next in line at, at, at uh, 205 pounds can fight John Jones next for the title. Now, when it comes to um, the Ultimate Fighter and, and the show itself, I mean, is there is, is is there any talk as far as the show not being on? Yeah, Dana, you're frozen. But. Uh... It's definitely moving off for Friday. It's definitely moving to a weekday. There will be announcement on that somewhere in the next 30, 45 days. But I will say that uh, Spike should watch their ass. Okay. And an another thing, when it, when it comes to that, I mean, how, how important was it from, from your standpoint to get uh, people of the caliber of Jones and, and Sonnen 
you know, on that show when moving it to a, a weekday. Um, was that was that part of it, or did you just decide that hey, Friday's not the right day for the show, and and it was going to happen the next year no matter what? Um, look, we we were absolutely monitoring the the Friday situation, and we want to see if there is a day that can work better for the show. Certainly, with the with with Jones and Sonnen as you know the coaches for this upcoming season, uh, we have probably the best casting that that we've seen for this show, and uh, we have really high expectations for what the ratings will be as a result. So I think with the move off of Friday and with uh, with the casting, we have very, very big expectations for, for ratings. Okay, and for, for Chael, I know that, that you doing the show has come up in the past and there were things that kind of held it back. I mean, is, is this... Is Doing the show been like a goal for you, or is it just kind of a means to the end of, of getting another championship match? Uh, it's a means to the end. It's, it's a tremendous nuisance. I, uh, you know, I don't want to go to Las Vegas. I live in West Lynn, and you know, but but that's the way it go. And I, and I appreciate you bringing up the show. I think a few of the reporters on this might have might have misunderstood the point of today's call. It's not for John and I. The, the show is coming up. It's on FX, and it's coming to a living room near you. I would also like to mention uh, to the media, and I really hope they report this, this show is the single biggest and toughest tournament that we have in this sport. This isn't a four-man tournament that gets spread over the course of a year. This is a 32-man tournament it will take place over five and a half weeks and be aired over ten of the most successful ratings weeks that FX has ever seen. This is a tournament that is tougher than the Olympic Games. It's tougher than the NFL playoffs. It's tougher than any tournament in sports. And that storyline constantly gets missed. This is no more reality TV than an NFL playoff or the Olympics were. It's real and it's on TV. The bottom line is this is a tournament. And this is a tournament so tough that... Great fighters like Josh Koscheck, Gray Maynard, Stephen Bonner, Chris Levin couldn't even win it. It's so tough that world champions Forrest Griffin and Rashad Evans came through it. I happen to know the talent that has been selected for this show. This will put all of those seasons to shame. And there is a world champion, if not more than one, that's in these young men. Write this down. The toughest tournament in mixed martial arts is coming to FX. Um, also for, for Dana, when, um, what is the, what's the filming schedule? Like when, when is, when is it going to start? And also, um, do you, I mean, do you have a venue or, or ideas for venues for this show? Is it going to be a Vegas show or is it going to be a, a stadium show or, or is that still to be determined? Yeah, no, it'll be, uh, you talk about the finale? Yeah, the, the, well, the, the, the fight, the fight, the, the Jones son and fight. Yeah, the finale will be at the Hard Rock, um, <clears throat> It, it, it premieres in January, and then we're, we're looking, we're talking right now. This isn't etched in stone, but we're talking about New Jersey uh, for, for the Jones fight. Okay. All right. Thanks very much. Thanks, everybody. Yep. Thank you. Next will be Ariel Helwani with MMAfighting.com. Hey, guys. Thanks for the time. Uh, Dana, do you know when the premiere date for The Ultimate Fighter will be? Yeah, January. No, the like the actual date. Oh, uh, we we don't have to. We're not putting out the date yet. Not yet. Okay. And, and what what do you say, Dana? To the obviously this has been very big news and polarizing news. What do you say to not only the fans but to the fighters? I'm sure you heard of what Leoto tweeted and Henderson tweeted today, who feel like you know Chael talked his way to a title shot and does not deserve this opportunity. Well, I can tell you this, and I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Dan Henderson had the opportunity for the fight. He got injured, right? Now, he got injured. Now Jones is injured. Jones is injured till friggin' April. So these guys will fight. He's, he's going to do the ultimate fighter with him. Every one of these guys that are bitching about a title shot now were offered the fight and turned it down. They refused to fight John Jones. Now they're bummed out because Chael stepped up on eight days' notice, and he's going to coach the ultimate fighter and fight him. I mean, it, it's pretty simple. These guys will coach. John Jones is hurt anyway. It's not like we're pulling Jones, uh, you know, putting the title on hold and pulling Jones off uh, to do the ultimate fight with Chael. He's hurt and can't fight till April. These guys will do this. They'll fight, and then uh, we can continue.
continue to have the light heavyweight division rolling, and we'll have an absolute number one contender when uh, Jones comes back. Okay, and a uh, question for Chuck. Uh, can you just uh, elaborate, if possible, on your uh, Spike should watch their ass co uh, comment? Um, clearly, Spike has, has been dogging us for, you know, most of this year with the launch of the two seasons of The Ultimate Fighter by, you know, trying to create viewer confusion um, and scheduling old episodes against The Ultimate Fighter and trying to pass them off as new content. Um, you know, they'll be out of the, the UFC game, effective in January. They're going to try to launch a new product. They're going to try to launch um, their own reality show that competes with The Ultimate Fighter or that does a very similar thing uh, to The Ultimate Fighter with their Bellator product. And, you know, Jeff saying that, uh, you know, we watched how they behaved and we're well aware of their behavior and, and how they've... Uh, you know, how they've acted competitively. So d does that mean you will try to look to go head-to-head -head with their programming next year? Not ready to commit to that, but we're certainly, you know, going to be watching how they schedule, what they schedule, and where they schedule. And was this part of, um, you know, for lack of a better word, a negotiation with the UFC? Because uh, obviously it seemed like FX, like Friday nights, um, there were some reservations, it seemed, from the UFC's end, um, saying, okay, we get a mega fight, mega players like this, but we have to change dates. Well, was that part of the discussion here for, for changing and, and moving off the Friday night slot? No, not really. I mean, we, we look, we want to put shows where they're going to work best, and, you know, we really believe in this product. We're, we're huge fans of what... Dana and Lorenzo and Craig Pelagian have built over, you know, the last seven years prior to coming to FX. And, um, you know, we want to we wanna find the best place for this product for it to work. Okay, just two last quick questions. One more for Dana. Uh, if, if John was 100% healthy, who would have been the coaches for the Ultimate Fighter? It seemed like Anthony Pettis thought he was in the running. Can you, can you tell us who you were considering? Yeah, I have no idea. We, we, I have no idea. Okay, and then uh, one for Chael. Uh, would you be able to respond to, you know, and a lot of people were surprised to see what, what Dan Henderson tweeted this morning and some of the other fighters, your peers. Can you respond to them um, and, and to the critics who say that you don't deserve this? Guys who work with you, side by side with you, who fight against you, who train with you, who are saying, you know, you, you clearly don't deserve this opportunity. Well, Aaron, let's be clear. You made that quote up. Nobody has said Chael clearly doesn't deserve anything. Secondly, welcome to life. We, we, we don't deserve things. You get what you get. And let's understand, not one of those fighters said, hey, Dana, I'll fight Chael. Hey, Dana, let, let me prove that I'm the number one contender. Let me fight that guy. Not one of them. They all sat there and said their little things. But I've called every one of those bastards out, and I'll call them out right now. And I got no problem getting a tune-up fight and slapping any one of these guys around, including the karate kid. So, you know, not only do they not want to carry the heavy water and fight me, they don't want to fight John Jones. Not one of them's called out John. The only fighter to call Jones out is me. Nobody called me out. I don't turn down fights, and I never get hurt. I will fight anybody at any time. So these guys can go say all these things they want, but not one of them has stepped up. You know, I got to deal with this all the time, where guys always get, get jealous or envious of an opportunity but they never want to walk out to the mound and point to the crowd and tell them where they're going to hit the ball. I will. I'll call my shots. And as far as talking my way into it, what do I care about that? So what, I talked my way into it. I wanted it, and I got it. I talked a cat out of a tree earlier today. I'll do whatever I want. I've got plenty of jobs that I wasn't qualified for, and I went in and I got promoted anyway. So uh, at the end of it all, Ariel, good for me, and chalk one up, one more up for the bad guy. And the next question will come from Ron Crook with Inside MMA. Hey, guys, I have a question for Chael. Chael, you have been in this uh, sport a, a long time. You have faced off against some of the top fighters in MMA. 
Where do you feel that John Jones ranks with some of those top fighters? And in your opinion, Jeff, do you feel he deserves the accolades that he's been receiving? Uh, you know, I think John Jones is, is the best fighter that I've ever seen. Um, if I was to compare him to somebody, I mean, I would put him, I would put Randy Couture above him, but, uh, a lot of that's just out of respect. I, I don't believe he's Randy Couture, but I believe he's fantastic. He's got techniques. I don't even know what they're called. Uh, you know, so, so yeah, good for John. Um, you know, but look, he needs me. The bottom line is he hasn't beat anybody until he beats me. And, and you know, I mean, let's go down the line. He, he beat Bader. You know, he beat Shogun. He beat, who's that, that, that glorified Hollywood extra, uh, Rampage, uh, Vitor. I mean, what's next? He's going to fight Scott Ferrozo? Listen, he needs me. And I am the man. And I'm the man because I say I'm the man. And if anybody else wants the spot, Come say it and come take it from me, man. I don't turn any of these guys down. These guys all talk tough, and behind the scenes, they don't sign the contract. These guys are all blowing up on their little Twitter accounts. Come come do the heavy lifting, boys. I'll be there. Quick follow-up, Jill. Have you picked coaches? Do you have some ideas who you want to work with? Yes. Can you, uh, can you tell us? Jail Sonnen will be the coach. All yourself. Shale Sonnen is going to take half of these young men and teach them to be fighters, and John Jones is going to take half of these young men and teach them to be selfish. The good news is, for John's team, I'm sure when it's all over, he'll throw a hell of an after party. Uh-oh, that's great. John, will you throw a hell of an after party? I just might. I just might. Definitely in April, for sure. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. And once again, if you would like to ask a question, please press star 1. Again, that is star 1 if you'd like to ask a question. We'll pause for just a moment. Next will be Franklin McNeil with ESPN.com. Yeah, my question, uh, my first question is for Chell. Chell, uh, what is it that, that you bring, and I know guys are crit being critical now, but what is it that you bring to the octagon that uh, John's previous uh, opponents do not or have not? Uh, well, you know, really just two things, Franklin. First off, uh, you know, I've been on both sides of an ass with him, and, uh, and that's something that John hasn't. Uh, you know, John's been, been very dominant, but he's also fought a lot of guys that are timid and they're afraid to get in a fight. I'm going to walk out there and I'm going to get into a fist fight. And, and above everything... I'm in a lot better shape than John or anybody else he's fought. And uh, as much as I'll admit, John, John is better. Skill for skill, he's fantastic. John will admit, I'm in better shape than anybody he's fought. No, we're he, talking he, you being he knows in, I'm going to bring you being, you being in good shape on TRT or off of TRT? On TRT, John. You tell everybody. You let the media know. Now, let's move on. Okay, my next question is for Dana. Dana, um, going to win this one or that one. I don't ever predict how fights are going to go. I can tell you this. <laughs> there's a lot of fights that I've watched throughout the last 13 years where I thought one guy was going to win, no problem, and somebody else wins. You never know in the sport. Anything is possible. John Jones has been incredibly dominant over the last year and a half, and, uh, you know, who knows? We'll see. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Next will be Bob Emanuel with Scripps Howard. You talked about the excitement of coaching these guys. How exciting do you think the prospect is of three, four, even ten years down the line watching these guys that were relatively strangers to you at the time when you start coaching them, watching their development over the long haul of their career? How exciting do you think that will be in the future for you? 
you know, I think that's the, the, the one and only thing you get as a coach. It's, it's the one and only reward uh, is you do, you do get to be part of it, and you do get to see guys uh, succeed in the next generation. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's great. That's, that's the biggest benefit. All right, thank you. And next will be James Bryden with Sportsnet Canada. Oh, hi, uh, John. Um, last last week you tweeted that uh, you, part of you wondered whether uh, having a fight with Sonnen uh, delegitimizes the championship belt. I'm wondering if you feel that way today, or is there something different that may change the way you're thinking as you two are going to fight? Well, you know, I'm kind of sort of between the middle. You know, I think a lot of a lot of the belts should be about the legit number one contender. Um, but, you know, um, as a sport, you know, without the fans, where's our sport? What does our sport mean? And, uh, you know, just just two months ago, you know, I had the whole world, you know, was calling me a, you know, a sissy and a wuss and saying that I'm afraid to chill on. And, and uh, you know, even my own fans in my own hometown questioned why I wouldn't fight Joe Sonnen. Uh, it seems like a lot of people have jumped on this train of chill not deserving a title shot. They jumped on that train a little too late. Uh, I think I'm over the fact of whether he deserves it or not. And I'm getting more realistic with uh, the fact that the fans really want it. And to go back to what I said originally, you know, without the fans, who are any of us? So um, I think that's really pushed me to the uh, to the point of, of looking for this ultimate fighter uh, opportunity. I'm injured. Uh, I have nothing to do anyways but to try to heal and uh, to be in Vegas. You know, working with some of the best physical therapists I can uh, to coach the ultimate fighter, to put the Chels signing chapter behind me, uh, to give the fans what they want all in one go, I, I think is a great decision. So um, does it delegitimize the belt? Um, I'm going to have to say in some ways, but in some ways it doesn't because this has nothing to do with the belt for me. Chels not getting close to the belt. Um, this, this is more about putting um, him into irrelevance. Um, and, and, and for Dana, uh, I think some fans are concerned that this may set a, a precedent for, for people getting their title shots, uh, but you explained it pretty well earlier um, as to why this is happening in this circumstance. I'm just wondering what, what your response is to people who say something like, well, this devalues the championship. I think people that, that, that said that maybe yesterday or the day before didn't really know the whole situation. Yeah. You know, now that all the facts are out there, I mean, it, it, it's, it's pretty simple and actually really makes sense. The fact that, you know, this, this kid's going to be sitting around till April anyway. He coaches this thing. When he's able to fight, he fights Chael Sonnen. Then, then the, uh, you know, there's no clogging up the division. It's not like we're clogging up the light heavyweight division, uh, you know, uh, for, for a guy who wasn't a contender. Like John just said, John said, I, I looked at this thing, and I said, listen, I can get in there, I can coach the ultimate fighter, and I get to, you know, I get to fight Chael Sonnen. Put this behind me and then defend the title. Line him up, number one through 30, and he can fight all the top contenders. And like I said, let me reiterate, all the top contenders that are pissed off that Chael Sonnen has a, uh, has a title shot are the same guys that I called and turned down fighting uh, John Jones. And, and just lastly for Chael, uh, John, John, John says that uh, it doesn't really matter whether it devalues the championship because you're not getting close to that belt anyway. What's your response? Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, it, it really doesn't make any difference. If John was the champion or wasn't the champion, I'm going to go beat up John Jones. And uh, and that's it. It sounds like he's in the same boat. And, you know, I like it. I like it when two guys want to fight. I want to fight John Jones. Uh, you know, so there you go. He can hang on to his belt. I'll take his belt right now if I want it. What's, the, what's he going to do about it? Thanks a lot. <laughs> you know, you know, he, he, he continues. He continues to act as though he's done something impressive. Or, you know, who did, who did he ever beat? I mean, come on, it's been a revolving door in that division. When Couture and Liddell left, that division became a joke. Now, John may be the guy. He may be the guy, but he isn't yet. Come on. Come on, Joe. All right, thanks, guys. Joe, really? Uh, next will be Matt Erickson with MMAJunkie.com. Uh, Matt Erickson, again, your line is open. Go ahead. 
Hearing no response to that line, we'll go to Brett Okamoto with ESPN. Hey, Dana, quick question for you. Do you have any update on uh, Dan Henderson's health and when we might see that fight with him and, and Machida? I don't know. You know, now, now that I got this thing done, I need to dive into what we're going to do. Obviously, uh, Gustafsson and, and, and uh, Shogun are fighting on December, and now i got to start putting some other fights together here for, uh, for, the, for the rest of the light heavyweight division. So, yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll, start, I'll start working on that this week. Was there any thought at all into putting Dan Henderson into the role against John Jones instead of Chael, or it just sounds like um, timing-wise you believe that Dan will be healthy before then so you didn't want him to be inactive? Is that correct? I don't know about Dan. That's the thing. You know, we, we were talking about Dan, you know, uh, you know, about Dan Henderson trying to get him to fight again uh, after his injury. They said it was only going to be a few weeks. That it would be a few weeks. He had to wear that brace and stay off it and all this stuff. But then a few weeks later, his knee wasn't ready. So, you know, the thing is, you guys have to understand, we got to pull the trigger, make decisions around here, and if guys aren't ready to fight, you know, we got to make some decisions. Yeah. So I guess, I mean, because I guess playing devil's advocate, because everything you say about the timing makes sense, but I think some people would say, well, why not just have Dan coach opposite John, um, because he was the rightful number one contender anyway, but it sounds like you didn't make that decision because of just some uncertainty about Dan's situation. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what Dan says. I don't even know if Dan would do the ultimate fighter. You know what I mean? It, it, it's, it's, a, it's a lot trickier than that. It's, it's easy to sit on the outside and go, oh, you should have done this, or you should have done that. Yeah, trust me. Getting shit done around here is a lot harder than it looks. Okay, thanks for that. And then uh, just real quickly, can you confirm that Forrest Griffin is staying on the card in December, right? And have you guys figured out a new opponent for him or not quite yet? Force is is still the co-main event, and we think we have an opponent for him. I, I you know, I, I'm not going to say anything until it's a done deal. Okay, thank you, Dana. Appreciate it. Thank you. Moving on to Dave Colson with the score. Hi, my first question is for John. It was brought up a little earlier. Um, you uh, said you have some coaches in mind. Were you able to divulge who those coaches will be at this point? Um, right now, I can. I can. Uh, I've confirmed a few guys, but I'm not really willing to talk about all the guys right now. Uh, but my wrestling coach, Izzy Martinez, is the style of wrestling. Uh, he'll be the wrestling coach. And uh, I want to, you know, Mike Wingo, John, and Greg Jackson are really busy guys. So I might go to some of my very original trainers before our Candy Jacksons. I might reach out to a lot of those guys and uh, give those guys, uh, you know, uh, you know, give them an opportunity to lunch. I'm kind of give back to my original training staff. So, uh, where Greg and Wink will probably come in here and there, um, you have to get to meet the people who taught me how to fight. The world taught me the basics in the beginning. All right, and just one question for Chael. Chael, obviously, when an opportunity arises to fight for a title, you don't want to turn that down. But is there any part of you that was hoping you could possibly get a fight at light heavyweight to get accustomed to the weight prior to uh, getting a title shot because you haven't fought at 205 in a few years now? No, I, I don't care about these weights. I've, I've never cared. When I started, we didn't even have weight classes. So it doesn't make any difference to me, and uh, you know, I would much rather fight in the main event, and I would much rather fight for a title. But aside from all of that, I'd much rather just fight John Jones. So the, the only thing that delegitimizes the title is the brat holding it. Next question. <laughs> thank, thank you, guys. Moving on to Reed Forgrave with FoxSports.com. This is a question for uh, John Jones. Uh, John, uh, clearly there's no love lost between you and Chanel, so I just want to ask you, I guess, point blank, uh, how do you feel about him as a person? How do you feel about Chanel as a person? Uh, Chanel's an interesting guy, man. He, uh, uh, he's a guy that, you know, I respect some things about him, like the way he, he um, you know, he tries, he goes out there and he gets what he wants, uh, everything except for world championships or any championships. Um, um, you know, so, you know, he's, he's a good talker. He's definitely good for the sport in some ways. Um, he's extremely disrespectful. Um, not much of a uh, championship level athlete at all. Uh, but you know, he, he has his qualities. You know, most of his qualities are going to become are going to come to light when he retires, and uh, he's able to 
you know, do his TV shows and his commentating and things like that. But, uh, you know, right now I feel as if I'm doing a lot of people in the sport a favor. Um, I'm doing show a favor by, you know, showing what his true calling is, and that's using that gift to get, uh, not athletic talent. Next is Dino Martin. MMAweekly.com. First question is for John. You know, uh, some of this uh, rivalry with you and Chell started on Twitter. I know there was some of this stuff has been back and forth very personal. He talked about your DWI and some things like that. And was there any concern with the, the things getting too personal, or, or is that all open game at this point? Well, you know what? I know who I am, and I know who Chell is. I know Chell that was very little class, and so if he goes extremely deep and personal, then uh, honestly, I think that that might work against them. You know, I think uh, I think uh, a lot of people kind of respect uh, promoting a fight and uh, taking things to the personal level. I, I don't think it's working for him. I don't think he cares. <clears throat> so if it gets personal, then you know it is what it is. And kind of the same question for Chael. Is there anything off limits as you head into this show? Uh, well, of course, uh, of course, there's things that are that are off limits, but. Uh, you know, going into the show is, it, it, look, I'm not picking a fight. I have my fight. Uh, so, so that's it. But, I mean, I don't offer any apologies. And if, if it offends them or, you know, John used that stupid word, disrespectful, you know, like like that matters or something. I, I couldn't possibly care less. But, uh, yeah, of course, you know, there's limits to everything. And even though I want to beat John up, he is a wrestler and there is a fraternity. And, I, and, and I'll always have a spot for him. Uh, you know, in my heart. So, so there you go. And, and one question for Dana. Uh, Dana, can you just real quick talk to us about the timeline, how this came together? Because I know just a few days ago, everyone's teasing about Jones and maybe Silva doing the super fight. And I know nothing's ever been a done deal, but what was the timeline and the decision making of this coming together? Because it seems like it came about pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah, it did, it did come together quick. It actually started when, uh, when we found out that Jones was hurt, you know, uh, he went to see his doctor in New York. Again, I, I don't know all the details. John would know better, but went to see his doctor out there. They got an MRI, thought he was fine. We brought him out here to L.A. to get looked at, and the uh, doctor said, no way. He shouldn't fight till April. Uh, he was going to be sitting around till April, so we figured it out. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Moving on to Richard Hunter with KRLD Radio. Yeah, thanks. Uh, question for Dana. Dana, you know, you, you mentioned a little while ago about uh, Chael Sonnen willing to step up originally on eight days' notice to save uh, the 151 card. <laughs> Selecting him to coach the Ultimate Fighter, getting in the fight with John Jones, is this uh, something that you would maybe like other fighters to see as a, a little bit of a message that when somebody is willing to step up and sacrifice that the favor could be reciprocated down the line? Uh no, it's it's not really about that. Um, I mean, the reality is the reality is I said it earlier, and it's true. You know, when we were when when that card fell apart, and we started making calls, uh, you know, all the top contenders that we called absolutely turned down the fight. So I don't want to hear any bitching out of any of them. You know what I mean? Too bad you guys had the opportunity to fight John Jones. You had the opportunity. I gave it to you. I called you, offered you that fight, and you all turned it down. Chael Sonnen was the only one who accepted that fight, you know, which stirred up and created the, this whole controversy and everything that went on between me and John and everything else. And then John gets injured in the Vitor Belfort fight. And, uh, you know, as I continued to talk to John, John started again. Like, I'll let John speak for himself. And he said it earlier. He liked the idea of fighting Chael and, and putting this chapter behind him and all the people who, th who thought that he was afraid to fight him. So it all just sort of worked out this way. <clears throat> uh, question for John. Uh, obviously, matching up with Chael Sonnen wrestling is going to be a, a topic of conversation here. It might be a little early to game plan for the fight. But uh, Chael is, you know, arguably the premier wrestler in the company. Uh, wrestling has worked out for you well in the past. How do you see wrestling factoring into this fight? Or would you think you would immediately take a different approach to, to beating him? Well, you know, uh, I said time and time again that uh, that it isn't a wrestling match. I really don't have much pride in never being taken down. It just has never happened because how seriously I take wrestling. You know, I've, I've fought in 
Uh, Rashad Evans, very fast and explosive double leg dive that just powers right through you, lifting you off your feet. Uh, he couldn't do it. You know, Vladimir Matryoshenko, Matt Hamill, um, who else? Jake O'Brien. You know, so um, you know, Chael Sonnen definitely is a decent, a pretty good wrestler. But you know, the guy was an Olympic alternate. He wasn't actually on the team. Uh, so. Uh, no disrespect to any other alternates out there today, but I mean, I don't really consider him a chill, uh, uh, Kel Sanderson or, or you know, a legit wrestler. I mean, he was a he was a freaking alternate. So uh, maybe he will get me down. Who cares if he does? He gets submitted all the time on the top position, anyways. Um, and you know, I think I have a very solid jujitsu game it's on my back, and it never I've never been able to uh, display it. So. I highly doubt um, his wrestling will play a gigantic factor in the fight. Um, I wrestled since I was a 14-year-old little boy. I still wrestle every day. I freaking love wrestling. Uh, so um, I definitely prepare uh, to use my takedowns against him. If he does get me down, so what? His ground and pound is very weak, and he gets submitted all the time anyway. So I don't care if he takes me down. I really don't feel any threat on my back against Joe Sonnen. And uh, I know for a fact... If I get him down, his face is probably going to open up. Um, and, you know, we'll definitely work a lot more. Our passes, uh, my my uh, Vito Belfort fight, was not impressed with my own top game. Um, although I submit, finished that fight in a submission, I still wasn't impressed with a lot of things. So I just think when it comes to wrestling, I have nothing to worry about. When it comes to wrestling, I have nothing to worry about. When it comes to jiu-jitsu, I think I have a slight edge in jiu-jitsu. When it comes to kickboxing, I know I have a freaking edge in kickboxing. His punching power on his feet is nothing crazy. Mine is nothing crazy. I'm not intimidated by his kicks. I mean, I really don't see any way Chell for Chell to win this fight. But I'm still going to train like an absolute madman because losing to Chell is not an option. So, you know, I'm going to treat him as if he's the biggest uh, opponent that I've ever had. I definitely am ready to... Smack down on him for a lot of the things that he said about other people, not even me. And I'm just ready to send this guy to the and send him to the movies. And Chael, let me get your response to that. Will you take John Jones down? God, that was so painful, John. Try, try to wrap your answers up, brother. That was just awful. <laughs> well, well uh, uh, okay. yes, I, I, of course, I will take John down repeatedly. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, thanks, guys. Moving on to Chris Poppins with 102.5, the game. Hey, Dana, uh, will there be any format changes for this uh, TUF, or will it be similar to what you're doing now? Yeah, there's going to be a couple of things that, that we do different in this show that we're talking about right now. Next will be Adam Martin with the score. Dana, yeah, just uh, as far as the changes go, I mean, you mentioned that you were possibly... And John, as the coaches, is because the ratings haven't been that great. Uh, was that part of the, the reasoning behind this? Uh, well, no. We obviously I, I laid it out here today why this happened and why this went down. But the fact that everybody says we're doing this because of the ratings makes it sound like people think that this will be great ratings. So <laughs> good, I like it. And Chuck, how do you expect the ratings to do uh, for this upcoming season? They should be epic. Great. And just uh, one more question for John. You mentioned uh, TRT and Chael earlier. What are your thoughts on that, John? Um, is it something you just uh, you don't want in the sport? What's your question? Uh, just about TRT, testosterone replacement therapy, and Chael obviously is a recipient of that. Is that something that you don't uh, really like? Yeah, I think it's terrible. I think it's absolutely terrible if you're if you're going to consider yourself an athlete. I mean, TRT will be perfect for Chael Sonnen. If he wasn't competing in one of the toughest sports in the world, I think Joe Sonnen made tons of money when he was a young guy, and now he's an older guy. 
and now just to be able to take a drug and, and super enhance yourself back to where you were in your 20s is bull. Right now I'm 25. I'm sure I'm not as giddy and happy-go-lucky as I was when I was 20. So if I take uh, a drug at my 25-year-old age and have the energy of a 20-year-old, it just wouldn't be fair. Everyone would hate me if I did it, but Chell Sonic gets to do it. I think it's bullcrap. And Chell, you, you said in the past that if you, if you don't take TRT, you could, you could die. So, I mean, how do you respond to Joan saying that to you just now? Uh, I I don't have any comment on the topic. Okay, Chell, one one more thing for you. Going, you're going up to 205, so what changes are you going to make it as far as your diet and, and just the strength of the conditioning uh, is concerned? Uh, you know, I, I won't make any. It's, it, there's really no change. You're talking about 20 pounds, and, uh, you know, I really struggled to get to 185. In college as a wrestler, I was a 197-pounder, so... You know, I've, I've, as an adult, I've had to compete at a, a smaller weight than I was even when I was younger. It was difficult, so uh, I won't have any changes. Um, we'll make the weight class just fine and and, uh, and move on to the fight. Next question will come from Matthew Roth with Bleacher Report. Again, Matthew Roth, your line is open. You can go ahead with your question, please. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this question's for Dana White. Um, Dana, the, 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 there has been um, the, a lot of people have been talking about this fight uh, between Chael and, and John Jones. Um, do, do you feel that the buildup uh, will maybe um, make people understand the reasoning behind uh, the booking of the fight? Do I think that the buildup for this fight will, will make people understand the what? Uh, why you've gone ahead and put this fight? Do you believe that the Chell Sonnen's uh, gift of gab will uh, will basically uh, justify in a lot of the critics' minds um, why you booked this fight? Well, you know, everybody keeps saying that. Everybody keeps saying, you know, because he talks, because he does this. Look, I said it 15 times on this call and, and 15 times before this. Let me say it again. He's the only guy that stepped up. You know, and I see I see some knuckleheads on Twitter going, Dan Henderson was hurt. Yeah, that's right. Dan Henderson was hurt. He was injured and had to pull out of this fight. Every other contender turned down this fight. Chael Sonnen was the only one who took it. It's not like Chael Sonnen just started, you know, saying bad stuff about John Jones, um, and and now he's got this opportunity. Um, he, he was going to take this fight on eight days' notice. Was going to step up and take this fight on eight days' notice when none of the top contenders, except for Dan Henderson, who was injured. Uh, Turned it down. Thank you. Thank you. And our last question will be a follow-up from Dave Meltzer with MMAfighting.com. Actually, this is a quick one. Do you, um, do you, what, what, what's the uh, schedule date as far as the filming? Um, do you have like a start date and you know what the six weeks are going to be essentially? When do we start filming? Yeah. The 29th. Of October yep. or November? October. Oh, so, we're so, here soon. so you're starting to film it in two weeks? Okay, yeah. cool. Thank you, Dave. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Dana. All right, guys. Thank you all very much for the time. We appreciate it and the support. We'll see you soon. And that does conclude today's conference. Thank you for your participation today.